bombing at a Pakistani mosque kills over 100 and injures over 200. On January 30th, a mosque was attacked by an Islamist suicide bomber in Peshawar, Pakistan. The police and the rescue officers reported that the death toll of the incident is now roughly 101. Chief rescue official Bilal uh, Faizi said that the bombing in the mosque wounded over 200 people. More than 300 worshippers were inside the mosque praying when the bomb was set off. The mosque that was attacked is located in a high security zone. Most of the dead were police officers. Uh, Shabarkov Muhammad, Mohmand, one of the commanders of the Tariq e Taliban Pakistan, or the, Talib, the Pakistani Taliban, the TTP, TTP, claimed responsibility for the bombing. However, the main TTP group, via its spokesperson, denied involvement in the bombing attack and said that they would not target mosques, seminaries, and religious places. They even said that they would be taking a action against anyone and punish anyone who did it. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif posted on Twitter saying the sheer scale of the human tragedy is unimaginable. This is no less than an attack on Pakistan. The Foreign Ministry of Afghanistan, the Saudi Embassy, as well as the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad condemned the attack. This is becoming a huge mess for Pakistan, which is goes back to why did they support the Taliban, the Pakistani government supported the Taliban, gain, gaining back its control in Afghanistan. And now it's, you know, now they are paying a huge price for it. Like, it's, this is why I'm telling you the the, what is it called? Um, the intelligence agency in Pakistan, ISI, right? Mm -hmm. They have, they, uh, they do things that is, absolutely and directly and explicitly against the border integrity of Pakistan, right? You know, and especially, especially given that Taliban is a cross border movement. It's like, it's a, it's an ethnic religious group, mostly it's a Pashtun Islamic group that, it, that it's across the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. There is no worse group that you could support that is in that puts Pakistan in danger. Like even even mm. the Tahri, you know, the Tahriki groups in, within Pakistan, they're not as dangerous because they're at least within Pakistan, right? This is a cross you mean the TLP? border move. Sorry, yeah, the TLP, right? Um, they are they within, you know, this is the cross border nature of it. It makes it so dangerous and destabilizing for the border integrity of uh, of Pakistan. So mm -hmm. it just makes no sense why they constantly are in support of it. And they back it. And now this is what happens. Yeah. And this is what happens yeah. when you do that. Yeah. There's because something again, I wanted. Another thing, let me mention that this is happening also uh, mainly because of Taliban coming back in power in Afghanistan. Yes. It has mobilized Taliban in other places, especially because the Taliban inside Pakistan considers the government in Pakistan to be non Islamic. So when you have such a victory in, in, in Afghanistan, this emboldens the Taliban in Pakistan. But also this news kind of suggests how Taliban is more of a movement rather than an institution, a centralized institution, okay? That's because there's true. many things that are happen that some Talibans are like, yay, thumbs up, and some Taliban are like, boo, we don't agree with this, right? So it's not like one centralized authority that speaks for Taliban. It's more of a movement. It's more of a flat, it's not like a, pyramid it's more like a you know horizontal flat organ institute you know movement yeah yeah um in the show notes armin there is a video that i would like you to show about this attack that um our lovely editor d sent to me and it provides a lot more context about how this happened and it made me understand the whole setting of this so much more so and Wait, there's no you... violence there's no violence in this video it's just camera footage before it happened Okay, with idea, right? Should I play with yes. idea? We can't Wait, hear I have, anything. I can't hear anything either. Maybe because I have muted this tab. There we go. There we go. Pakistani investigators have released CCTV video purportedly showing the moment a suicide bomber managed to infiltrate what is supposed to be a secure area. Dressed in a police uniform and riding a motorbike, he was simply waved through without any checks. The question of security lapses there. Uh, I admit 
that yes, there was a security lapse just because uh, uh, the uh, suicide bomber was dressed in a police uniform. The entire command of the police line's gates is not under one authority because inside there are seven different smaller units or organizations and each one has their own command structure and therefore the confusion, the chaos caused uh, this uh, detectable yet undetected entry into the police lines. And undetected, the suicide bomber continued to his target. This CCTV footage shows him leaving his motorbike by the roadside. He is then called back by a police officer. He pushes his bike away, pretending it had broken down. This is the last checkpoint the suicide bomber would have gone through before making his way to the mosque. Investigators say the police vest he was wearing was filled with 10 to 12 kilograms of explosives. They also say it appears the attacker didn't know where the mosque was and had to ask for directions. Further footage released by police shows the man walking towards the mosque, where he would go on to inflict the single largest loss of life the police here have ever suffered. And as they come to terms with their loss, questions about what else can be done to protect security personnel still remain. There's no modern technology to protect police facilities. Having facial recognition or fingerprints or biometric entry, etc., etc., on the level of technology which is internationally uh, accepted as a standard feature, uh, the resources that are required, probably those are either not available or uh, we are not uh, having those. Funerals are still taking place. Police chiefs are trying to keep the morale high among the 130,000 strong force in the province. But there's concern there could be more attacks. Interesting. So I think that provides a lot more context and that this was an attack on a police compound. And what's interesting, mm. based on other footage and news reports I saw of it, is that the death toll is probably so high mostly because when the explosion happened the guy was in the front row of the mosque but then it seems like it was actually the collapse of the ceiling that caused most of the fatalities and injuries and there are like some questions about how that happened um so wait people are asking some questions um okay so Guru, I don't know how to say this. Guru Nathan, Guru Nathan, uh, Guru Nathan, yes. Why do they think that Pakistani government is not Islamic? Uh, well, I mean, because it's a technically a secular government and it also doesn't enforce a lot of Islamic laws. So, and it's the Taliban. Unless you, unless you have like a strict, you know, abundance to Islamic to Sharia, then you're not Islamic. So, according to the Taliban, right? Um, Zagros is saying, does Taliban produce opium? And if yes, well, how do they justify it Islamically? I mean, they do, in, in, they allow it in Afghanistan, they make money from it. I mean, there's nothing in Islam that is says anything against opium, so that's how they justify it. So there's nothing explicitly in Islam that is anti opium. Um, do you highlight this one? Oh, this was just sweet. Sasan is thanking D for all of her hard work. So I wanted to highlight that because she does deserve the recognition. Um, yeah. And I also, I also wanted Secular to... Rarity just got membership from Secular Sakai. Oh, so thank you. amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. For all right, go on. Well, the thing about this attack is that, I mean, Peshawar, like, Peshawar has been through hell because yeah. of the Taliban. And this attack that happened is the worst and most deadly attack that's happened since 2013. And so I was reading reports about how a lot of people who were there in Peshawar during the worst of it, you know, around like 20, 2009 to 2013, like they are now packing up and trying to leave because they're so terrified that this could just be the beginning of going back to how bad that time was. 
Uh, Veganoth is asking, what was the bomber's motive? Not entirely known. Um, at first, it seemed like the Pakistani Taliban claimed it, and then they tried to, the higher leadership tried to backtrack, and so it's not entirely clear. But, I mean, what is clear, it was an attack on the Pakistani security apparatus. Right. So, vegan ATS is saying, what was the bomber's motive? Okay, so we don't know ex exactly, but I'm assuming instability and recruiting. If I had to guess, it was these two, okay? Especially mm -hmm. because at this time where there's some hope for people who are sympathetic to Taliban attitudes inside Pakistan, given what they've seen happen in Afghanistan, there might be some optimism. If you show that you this is an active movement, it's going to be easier for them to uh, appeal to people who are hoping um, an Islamic state eventually in Pakistan, eventually, <laughs> according to them, um, for them to show like, look, this is an active movement, so join us right now. So a lot of these attacks are basically a marketing tool. This is mm. people dying. It's a marketing tool for these people to like, look at, look, we're actually doing things. So come, come, mm. come right now. We need you. So that's what's happening. It's also, it's also a display of strength. Yeah. What's so sad is that the intelligence agencies had told the Peshawar police that there was, that they knew that there was going to be a suicide attack in Peshawar. Wow. And things were so lax that this still happened. Yeah. Did you see the security? And I assume that whenever an attack like this happened, again, I could be wrong, the security is going to be more for two weeks okay so right and you see like people coming through and they're like okay go go and sometimes when you have a bag and stuff instead of like opening it they just touch the bag or like okay i check and they pass it and then when there's an attack for like two weeks or you know three months they're gonna like oh let me just look in the bag let's open the trunk check everything in the trunk and then you wait one month and it goes back to their uh, lack security. So all the, the terrorists have to do is just wait it out. You just have to wait it out until the security go back, goes back to where it was. But that's because they, ha they don't have the resources to be that diligent when it comes to security. They don't, that, that yeah. requires a lot of manpower, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> some people are saying, how is Pakistan not Islamic enough? Oh, you have no idea. We don't have enough time. <laughs> it's very you know it's very non-islamic actually that's like, what, i mean especially in the story we're about to cover next you will ask yourself that question again and yet yeah. it remains the case i mean it even claims to be have you know it claims to have secular like the secular law somewhat i mean they work with the u.s they have they get aids from the u.s they do anti-terrorism activities with the u.s um they don't fall they don't enforce a lot of islamic laws so for a lot of people, Pakistan is very, very far from what they consider to be Islamic. I mean, we have even even within Taliban, we have um, within Afghanistan, we have ISIS member who think that the Taliban is not Islamic. They call them mortads. The ISIS K in Afghanistan considers Taliban to be so relaxed on Islamic laws that they consider them to be ex-Muslims. So they think that the Taliban is like us. They have left Islam. They call them ex-Muslims. So <laughs> we should go to Taliban like, hello, our fellow ex-Muslims. We should join, We should invite them to the next ex-Muslim conference. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that would be such an insult. Okay. Uh, you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.